Damage 365 Radio. So you can catch everything on all those social media outlets. And um, yeah, so all the, all those women that were uh, on the ballot, the, the ballot was as as is. It was Kimberly, Casey Carlisle, Hal Dead, Santana Garrett, Nivo- Nicole Zavoy, uh, Radiant Rain, uh, also known as Bonnie Maxson, Gorgeous George, Stephanie Bowers, Deanna Parazzo, Caitlin Diamond, and Casey Spinelli. And then we had an other option that you can enter. And um, we also had an age range. So out of the 72 votes, the age range, the most popular age range was between 26 and 35. So it wasn't little kids voting for their favorite wrestlers. They were adults here. So um, again, check us out. Damage365radio.weebly.com. We will let everybody know when pre-sales for Legends of the Ring and Big Bang on sale. Right now, pre-sales for WrestleFest 2 and the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstar signing with Ariane Andrew, Fulano Cameron, are on sale now. If you pick them up, you will save $5 on each signing. It's $20 for a signature, $20 for a photo op, Thirty-five for the combo at both shows. At both shows, if you get the pre-sale. If you don't get the pre-sales and you show up at the show, it will be twenty-five, twenty-five, and forty-five, and uh, twenty dollars for each additional item. Uh, any championship belt is also twenty dollars, and uh, you can bring and you can bring your own items, total divas items. You can bring figures. Um, Cameron is in a figure, uh, a figure with uh, Naomi in the uh, Funkadactyls Twin Pack. There are plenty of WWE cards out there with Cameron on it, and uh, you can you can bring those. We'll only charge fifteen dollars for signed cards. We will also have signed cards on the spot that will be on sale for fifteen dollars as well. Uh, remember, pre-sales save yourself five bucks each, or save yourself ten dollars for the combo. So, again, Damage365radio.weebly.com. Um, we're going to take a quick uh, commercial break. We'll be our final commercial break. And when we come back, we will have our Million Dollar Man interview, Ted DiBiase. And uh, it should be, uh, I think you guys are going to love it. So uh, sit back, relax. We'll be back in two minutes and uh, 45 seconds. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Hello, ladies. I'm the Big Balboski here, and you're listening to Damage 365 Radio. <laughs> Wrestling Superstores, selling wrestling memorabilia from all around the world, including WWE, TNA, Japan, Mexico, and the very best of the independents. They've got action figures, DVDs, autographed memorabilia, t-shirts, and more. Plus, stop in and get tickets for great promotions like UWA Elite, CZW, and many others. Located indoors at the world-famous English Town Flea Market, Green Building Booth Number 35 on 90 Wilson Avenue, Manalapan Township, New Jersey. Open every Saturday and Sunday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Log on to Facebook.com slash Funkenstein Inc. for more information. This is the War Machine Rhino, the last ever ECW World Heavyweight Champion, and you're listening to Damage 365 Radio. Keep listening, or you'll get gored in half. WarriorsOfWrestling.com. See roster profiles of past and present Warriors of Wrestling stars. Over 50 highlight videos of Warriors of Wrestling events, full-length matches, order tickets to future Warriors of Wrestling events, and an extensive DVD collection featuring 
past events, compilations, documentaries, and much, much more only at warriorsofwrestling.com. This is Lanny Poffo, formerly the genius full of glory and renown. You are listening to Damage 365 Radio. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. This is former WWE superstar Damian Sandow, now known as Aaron Stevens, and you're listening to Damage 365 Radio. Keep it tuned. You're welcome. And again, thanks to our sponsors, the Funkenstein Wrestling Superstore. Yes, we need new commercials, but that's why I do this after every cut. Blue Building in the English Town Flea Market. Blue Building. Moves 46 through 48. And uh, check them out on Facebook, Funkenstein Inc. That's Facebook.com slash Funkenstein Inc. Also, Warriors of Wrestling and WarriorsofWrestling.com. Check them out for past, future, and uh, present shows. As uh, with last show, we just had Damien Sandow, as you just heard that uh, audio cut and promo from uh, the Savior of the Masses and new wrestler at TNA. That's right. TNA got one of the good ones. He's, he's an awesome guy. Don't, don't you and uh, not even kidding. But uh, without further ado, let's get in to our interview with WWE Hall of Famer. The Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, the ultimate heel of the WWE and WCW and the NWA for years and years, uh, now turned minister. He is an awesome guy, great stories, great person to talk to, and he will be on tour with Damage 365 Radio come November 15th and 16th, uh, sorry, November 19th and 20th. That will be... Uh, Saturday evening at Warriors of Wrestling and the next day on the 20th at Pro Wrestlers World, Bud Carson's Pro Wrestlers World at the Merchant Square uh, Mall in Allentown, PA. And uh, he'll be doing signings both those days. So if you want to check out Hall of Famer and get an autograph, Ted DiBiase, that's the the day to do it. So um, without further ado... Uh, let's do this interview. It's 38 minutes and 35 seconds. Uh, and then when we come back from them, I'll have just a few words regarding uh, the Million Dollar Man. And um, then we'll close out the show. So uh, we'll be back in about 38 and change. And I hope you enjoy this interview. Thanks to uh, everybody. I did all my thank yous during, uh, right after the interview. But um, thanks to everybody involved for making this happen. Uh, it's it's not easy getting superstars, uh, especially the very popular ones, on the radio show. They do so many, and they get kind of tired of talking about the same stuff over and over again. So we appreciate when they're able to give us their time, especially 40 minutes worth. So here you are, Hall of Famer, WWE, one of the best of all time, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we'd like to welcome in our guest of the day. He is... A WWE Hall of Famer, and uh, some will say uh, a former WWE champion, maybe not that long, but uh, he did have the belt around his shoulder briefly and around his waist at a couple of live events before Jack Tunney stole it from him. He is the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. (laughs) Welcome to the show. Great to be with you, man. Great to be with you. So let me let me ask you real quick before we get into the beginning, uh, since I opened with that uh, Jack Tunney taking the title from you. Um, I mean, WWE never officially gave you a chance to uh, to run with the title to have a title run. Uh, some will say that you didn't need it because you were the ult- the ultimate heel, and the best thing that you ever did was created the million dollar title because it. Uh, it, it, it kind of just was a slap in the face to all the title holders in WWE that, you know, you were the ultimate heel. You had your own title. Like, but did you did you really, I mean, was it something that you really kind of wanted to have the WWE title at least once? Well, you know, regardless of, uh, of who you are, I think, you know, you you, you, know, you want to aspire. I mean, uh, before WWE, you know, uh, you know, my ambition was to be the NWA uh, World Heavyweight Champion. Which, right. At the time, in the regional days of wrestling, was probably the most recognized nationally. You know, Vern uh, Gagne had his own. He called himself the world champion, but it was just for the AWA. Right. And, uh, 
but, but, but the bottom line is, you know, it's wrestling is a business and it's sports entertainment and, you know, titles are, 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 are their props. And, uh, obviously though, you know, your, your top guys are going to be the guys that have the title and, um, you know, you aspire to that. But where I was concerned <clears throat> in the WWE, um, and initially the thought was that I would somehow, you know, buy my way, pay somebody off, do something at WrestleMania four and be that guy right. to have the title for a while and run with Hogan. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, it was Pat Patterson who asked me the question. He said, Ted, what's going to put more heat on you if we do what we normally do and possibly what the people expect, or you don't win the tournament and, and out of, you know, out of your anger and whatever in your in your personality, you go, you know what? Basically, you know, uh, I don't need you. I'll create my own title and just and and, and I said, you know, and, and again, I, and how arrogant can you be? So every night I walk to the ring with my own personally made belt, declaring myself the champion. Yeah. And it's like, you know, everybody. I mean, and as soon as he said it, I said, that's what we do, because that's going to make everybody hate my guts. I mean, every night, you know, and and. Um, and it was. I mean, uh, you know, would I have liked to have that run? Yeah. But, I mean, in reality, it, it's, you know, where business is concerned, you know, I didn't need it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I, I agree with you there. I mean, you, you were just such the, the, the ultimate heel. It didn't, it didn't matter what you did. People uh, were going to hate you for it. Uh, especially your, your promos where you'd have the little kids come out and dribble the basketball and then kick it away from them at the last second so you didn't have to give them any money. <laughs> and, of course, you know, uh, of all the things I did, that, that, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I even had to answer that on Twitter. It was like a, a lot of people were like, you know, what you know, what a, you know, what a bum, what a, you know, <laughs> worse words, you know. And I go, look, I said, I, I can't believe that I even have to explain this. Yeah, well. We are sports entertainment the kid got the money, you know, it was all staged, but, but it was, you know, at the time, uh, the whole deal was it was rehearsed, but when we did it live, we, I had to be hardcore and you right. know, he, he was a little kid and you know, I've got this, this, this deep voice that carries. And, and, and so when I said it to him like that, but very harshly, it scared him, you know, crocodile tears, he ran to his mom. And, uh, and he couldn't have done it better. But reality is, you know, they absolutely, every, uh, everything that we did, everything that we did on television that made people believe I was jilting them, they actually did get the money. And even in the arenas, they also got the money. And those were not, those were not rehearsed. Those were, those were live. <clears throat> One of those guys was, uh, RBD. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> see, see what happened. You, you, you inspired him with a little, uh, little, little cash. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you maybe you would have gave him a little more, he wouldn't have been jumping off the top ropes every five seconds. <laughs> oh my god, those ECW guys—that was a whole different breed of breed of wrestling. Um, okay. All right, so let, let's let's go back to the let's go back to the beginning uh, before the Million Dollar Man was uh, even it, uh, invented yet. Um, you know, you had um, from what I've read, you had a you know rough childhood uh, with family, and and you, know, you you lost your your dad in the ring, and was that was was he the reason that you decided to become a wrestler, or was that something you already wanted to do prior? Well, no, my my you know my BB Hashi was my stepfather, right. married my mother when I was five. Uh, they actually met because they were both wrestlers. A lot of people, they, they, they remember that my dad was a wrestler, but a lot of people don't know that my mother was also a professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. And and uh, her wrestling name was Helen Hild, H-E-L-D. Um, but, yeah, Mike DiBiase had a tr- tremendous impact on my life. I mean, he became my dad. I mean, I was only five. I mean, so he's the only dad I ever really knew. Uh, and he, not only was he a professional wrestler, I mean, he, you know, he was one of the, one of the four most um, okay. There's only four athletes in the history of the University of Nebraska to letter eight times. Hmm. He lettered eight, eight. He lettered four years in football, four in wrestling. In 1946, just prior to going to Nebraska, right out of the Navy. Well, he was wrestling for the Navy, not the Naval Academy, for the Navy. Okay. He won the a- AAU National Heavyweight Wrestling title. So I mean, you know, a tremendous athlete and uh, a great man and a great dad. You know, uh, you know, DiBiase's Italian, and like most Italians, uh, you know, I, you know, if you're Italian, you know, family's everything, and so exactly. very close, close knit family. 
Uh, and so, yeah, uh, 